Want to give a shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much for all of the continued support. And I am done. Okay, so I just finished up reading Jade Shards by Fonda Lee. This is a short story collection in the Greenbone Saga series. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing this book, which was just right now. So I've got some mixed thoughts about this one, um, as I suspect that most people would in a short story collection, uh, because they're not all going to be perfect, you know. Um, and I liked a couple of them. I didn't like a couple of them. And ultimately, I think I'm going to give this one a three and a half. Out of five, I don't really like to give halves, but I think it's fair in this case. Uh, it's not a four, it's not a three, so it's a three and a half. Uh, if, you, if you're if you wondering what this is, because I, I haven't seen this book get a lot of, like, um, you know, hype around it yet, but I, I suspect that's also true for a short story collection. I, I don't think a lot of people are super hyped about it, but the Greenbone Saga is immensely popular. And I, and I think uh, after having on my channel for a couple years now, or not a couple years, but like a year and a half, uh, I've seen that this series has gotten more popular over time. Even after the last book has come out, it's gotten more popular. And I hope, I hope that's the case. I hope it keeps on going because I thought all three books in the initial trilogy were five out of fives. But I'm not a big uh, short story collection guy. Uh, but yeah, not a ton of hype around this. And and ultimately, I kind of feel like, you know, the first two, there's four short stories in this, and they all tell some sort of backstory to the characters. Uh, all of these take place before the, I think this is right. Um, I think all of these take place before the first book in the trilogy takes place. And you oftentimes see these short stories. Sometimes, sometimes they're later. Sometimes they're earlier. These are these are definitely earlier, and they all tell some interesting story that you know. I think most readers were somewhat interested in uh, when they're reading the series. It, you know, one of the stories, for example, tells about how one of the characters ended up getting adopted. Um, it's a char If you've read the series, you know exactly who I'm talking about. And it just tells the background there. Uh, you know, one of them tells about how a relationship that exists in the first book started. Uh, you know, one of them tells how a how a friendship started. And, you know, there are all these kind of how X started sort of things. And... You know, so I felt like the first two of them were were very good. You know, I don't know that I'm ever going to give a short story uh, five out of five stars. And I've heard some criticism on this point of mine that I should judge books based on, you know, the type of book that they are. And that I shouldn't judge short stories when compared to, you know, full length novels. But I have a hard time giving a five out of five stars to something that is lacking core components that I look at when I'm looking for it, for a book that I'm going to enjoy. And ultimately, you know, five stars means, you know, that I don't really see many faults in it and that I thoroughly loved it. And if I don't thoroughly love a short story, I can't give it a five out of five stars. Uh, so yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of people give five out of five stars here, but if you were to ask them, you know, oh, well, how does it compare to any of the books in the initial trilogy? Nobody's going to say these are better than that. Nobody is going to say that they're on par with that. They're going to judge them based on other short stories. And I'm just, I'm not that kind of reviewer. That's not what I am. But hopefully someday I'll read one where I get, I go, yeah, five out of five. So, uh, two of them I really enjoyed. Um, one of them I did not enjoy. I didn't hate it, but I give it like a two out of five. And in one of them, I give like a three out of five. I was just kind of so-so on it. And, you know, those don't average out to exactly three and a half. Um, I think that it's like 3.15 or something like that. I'm not good at math. Uh, but I'm going to round it up a little bit. Um, ultimately, that's, that's where I'm at. And when I look at this, you know, the writing quality is there. Uh, Fonda Lee, I think, is a, is a fantastic writer. I, I wouldn't say that she's a brilliant writer when it comes to prose. Uh, but I think she's above average. Uh, in fact, very good. Uh, I just, I can't, you know, compare her with the greats of this genre, but she's definitely better than most. Um, and that was still uh, evident. I wouldn't say that she's improved over, over time. Uh, you know, I feel like all of the books in the first trilogy were relatively the same sort of thing. You know, you see some authors massively grow from the first book to the third. And so we're now kind of four books in it, even though this is very short. This is like 100 or so pages. Um, you know, it says it's more than 100, but, you know, I, I feel like if, if I see the real book here, it's going to be like big font or, you know, small pages or something here because uh, 
But yeah, this ain't, this isn't a hundred page book. This feels more like 75 ish in terms of word count. Um, so, but I'm still going to say four books. So yeah, the quality is still there. The characters are still there because we're dealing with the same characters and you get to see a little different depth to them than you, than you saw in the first one. It's the plot here. And ultimately it's like, why was this written is a question that, uh, that I always like to have answered. And I can't really say the answer here other than it was a fun thought experiment for the author to go down. And after writing that, you want to do something with it, especially when you know that it's going to sell. And if I was an author, I'd, I'd do the same thing. This is probably very easy to write. I mean, it feels like she could have you know, busted out these short stories you know, in a few days uh, for each story. This, doesn't, this isn't like a huge amount of work. And she already knew these characters so well. She probably already thought of these stories. So just getting them on paper couldn't have been that difficult. And, and so the stories, you know, they're, you know, they, because they're so short, you know, 20 or so pages each, you're not going to have that beginning, middle and end with this crazy action going on and this well-developed story. Um, and, but I can't look at any of them individually and say that they're incredible. I also can't look at these stories and say that they interweave and to, to create this larger narrative. A couple of the stories do, um, but they're not that interweaving where I'm going to get this central plot that's going to carry these stories through. And so the story suffers because of this. Um, and I suspect it always will for short stories. And that's just a bias that I have. But, but definitely I felt that, like the stories were all you know, on the weaker side, um, but still some of them were enjoyable. But I, but I keep coming back to like, why? Why did, did we need these stories? You know, I find in fantasy that oftentimes that which is left unsaid can be more interesting than when you go into depth. And it's a careful balance that an author has to do on when is too much information, or when is information too much information. And I worry that some of these stories went down that path. It didn't ruin the story for me. In fact, if it, when I go do a reread, I might enjoy this information a little bit. At least it'll give me a little bit more fun background to it. But you know, it, it did take away some of the mystique to these. And because I'm a, I'm a big fan of, you know, getting dumped into a world and not being filled in on all the information because that feels more real to me. You know, I don't want all the answers, uh, at least, especially not right away, but I, I don't also want them, you know, even till the end of this, I don't, that's too perfect for me. I want my books to be more reminiscent of real life and real life is confusing. I mean, if you dropped into my real life, you know, you shouldn't expect to, to know everything going on. You should pick it up along the way. And some things will always remain a mystery. And it just, you know, it felt too convenient, some of these things. Not so much of the plot, but just, you know, we're, we're, it felt like what happened was Fonda Lee kept getting people asking her questions. You know, wh why did this character do this? When did this character do this? And she got, oh, I'll write a story about that. You know, oh, I've got enough questions on this. There's clearly interest. Let me go tell that story. Instead of what I think an author should do is kind of remain immune to fan critique. And, you know, and I, it's funny that I say that as, a, as somebody who does critique. But authors shouldn't watch my stuff and react to it in terms of changing the way that they write. You know, if they watch my stuff and they want to, they want to react and say, Matt, thank you for the review. Matt, uh, screw off for the review. More power to you. Uh, I would love the engagement. Uh, I've never had somebody in that latter category, but I would thoroughly love it if that happened uh, because I like passion and I like, I mean, these authors are real people and, you know, I, I appreciate and, and would highlight, you know, if, it, if an author ever um, comments on my videos, I always pin it, even if it's, and if it's negative, I would, I would do the same thing. But, but I don't ever want an author to alter the way they would write based on something that I would feel or fans at large feel. And I just think that's what happened here. Um, and that's a little unfortunate for me. I, I wish Fonda Lee would go off and just do whatever her brain tells her to do and just tell me stories that are sitting back there. Uh, whether they're well received or not well received, just go do your thing, Fonda. Um, you know, you don't. These didn't have to be told. But again, I feel like I might, I may be in the minority on that. Most of my negative opinions are in the minority because I find most people are very positive. Um, I try to be that way. I feel like a positive person, but I, end, you know, whenever I end up having something negative to say, I, you know. It's definitely not the predominant opinion. Uh, you know, most people are happy people. That's why most books are getting, you know, a, 
you know, a, a you know, a quote unquote bad book will get a three and a half out of five stars on Goodreads. And that would just be atrocious from a ratings perspective. You'll find most books in that four or above range. And on my scale, that means that I really liked the book. And to think that that's the case for every book is just crazy. So, you know, I am on that more negative side of things and I'll just, you know, take that for what it is. But, but yeah, so that's where my head's at. I did enjoy this a little bit. Um, you know, didn't love it, but you know, I'm a mix between liking it and so, so on it. So, uh, if you are a big green bone saga fan, pick it up. Uh, you know, if you liked it, it were, but we're happy with how it ended and just kind of want to move on. This isn't gonna, you know, you're not going to love this thing. This is for diehard fans. This is for fans that have gushed over the series and that were desperate to find out more information about their favorite characters. Um, and if, if you're that person, then you're going to, you're going to thoroughly enjoy what you get here, but for all other people, yeah, you know, just skip it, go on to something else. Um, but, but yeah, I suspect a lot of the people watching this are going to be in that former camp that love this series and just, if they've read it, uh, that love this series and just can't wait to eat eat up more words in this, in this universe. And, and so for those people go pick this thing up, I'm sure it can't be very expensive. Um, I think it comes out next week. Um, I think it comes out on July 1st, so not very say the answer here, other than it was a fun thought experiment for the author to go down. And after writing that, you want to do something with it, especially when you know that it's going to sell. And if I was an author, I'd, I'd do the same thing. This is probably very easy to write. I mean, it feels like she could have, you know, busted out these short stories, you know, in a few days uh, for each story. This doesn't, this isn't like a huge amount of work. And she already knew these characters so well. She probably already thought of these stories. So just getting them on paper couldn't have been that difficult. And, and so the stories, you know, they're, you know, they, because they're so short, you know, 20 or so pages each, you're not going to have that beginning, middle and end with this crazy action going on and this well-developed story. Um, and, but I can't look at any of them individually and say that they're incredible. I also can't look at these stories and say that they interweave and to, to create this larger narrative. A couple of the stories do, um, but they're not that interweaving where I'm going to get this central plot that's going to carry these stories through. And so the story suffers because of this. Um, and I suspect it always will for short stories. And that's just a bias that I have, but, but definitely I felt that, like the stories were all, you know, on the weaker side. Um, but still some of them were enjoyable, but I, but I keep coming back to like, why, why did, did we need these stories? You know, I find in fantasy that oftentimes that which is left unsaid can be more interesting than when you go into depth. And it's a careful balance that an author has to do on when is too much information or when is information too much information. And I worry that some of these stories went down that path. It didn't ruin the story for me. In fact, if it, when I go do a reread, I might enjoy this information a little bit. At least it'll give me a little bit more fun background to it. But, you know, it, it did take away some of the mystique to these. And because I'm a, I'm a big fan of, you know, getting dumped into a world and not being filled in on all the information because that feels more real to me. You know, I don't want all the answers, uh, at least, especially not right away, but I, I don't also want them, you know, even till the end of this, I don't, that's too perfect for me. I want my books to be more reminiscent of real life and real life is confusing. I mean, if you dropped into my real life, you know, you shouldn't expect to, to know everything going on. You should pick it up along the way. And some things will always remain a mystery. And it just, you know, it felt too convenient, some of these things. Not so much of the plot, but just, you know, we're, we're, it felt like what happened was Fonda Lee kept getting people asking her questions. You know, wh why did this character do this? When did this character do this? And she got, oh, I'll write a story about that. You know, oh, I've got enough questions on this. There's clearly interest. Let me go tell that story. Instead of what I think an author should do is kind of remain immune to fan critique. And, you know, and I, it's funny that I say that as, a, as somebody who does critique. But authors shouldn't watch my stuff and react to it in terms of changing the way that they write. You know, if they watch my stuff and they want to, they want to react and say, Matt, thank you for the review, Matt, uh, screw off for the review, more power to you. Uh, I would love the engagement. Uh, I've never had somebody in that latter category, but I would thoroughly love it if that happened uh, because I like passion and I like, I mean, these authors are real people and, you know, I, I appreciate and, and would highlight, 
you know, if, it, if an author ever um, comments on my videos, I always pin it, even if it's, and if it's negative, I would, I would do the same thing. But, but I don't ever want an author to alter the way they would write based on something that I would feel or fans at large feel. And I just think that's what happened here. Um, and that's a little unfortunate for me. I, I wish Fonda Lee would go off and just do whatever her brain tells her to do and just tell me stories that are sitting back there. Uh, whether they're well received or not well received, just go do your thing, Fonda. Um, you know, you don't. These didn't have to be told. But again, I feel like I might, I may be in the minority on that. Most of my negative opinions are in the minority because I find most people are very positive. Um, I try to be that way. I feel like a positive person, but I, you know, whenever I end up having something negative to say, I, you know. It's definitely not the predominant opinion. Uh, you know, most people are happy people. That's why most books are getting, you know, a, you know, a, a, you know, a quote unquote bad book will get a three and a half out of five stars on Goodreads. And that would just be atrocious from a ratings perspective. You'll find most books in that four or above range. And on my scale, that means that I really liked the book. And to think that that's the case for every book is just crazy. So, uh, you know, I am on that more negative side of things and I'll just, you know, take that for what it is, but, but yeah, so that's where my head's at. I did enjoy this a little bit. Um, you know, didn't love it, but you know, I'm a mix between liking it and so, so on it. So, uh, if you are a big green bone saga fan, pick it up. Uh, you know, if you liked it, it were, but we're happy with how it ended and just kind of want to move on. This isn't gonna, you know, you're not going to love this thing. This is for diehard fans. This is for fans that have gushed over the series and that were desperate to find out more information about their favorite characters. Um, and if, if you're that person, then you're going to, you're going to thoroughly enjoy what you get here. But for all other people, yeah, you know, just skip it, go on to something else. Um, but, but yeah, I suspect a lot of the people watching this are going to be in that former camp that love this series and just, if they've read it, uh, that love this series and just can't wait to eat it, eat up more words in this, in this universe. And, and so for those people go pick this thing up. I'm sure it can't be very expensive. Um, I think it comes out next week. Um, I think it comes out on July 1st. So not very many days from now, less than a week. So, uh, like three days, four days. So that's where I'm at. Hope you'd enjoy this review. And as always, happy reading to you. Thanks again to all my patrons with a special shout out to my Ascendant tier and Librarian tier patrons, Anna G, Brian, CJ, Darren, Jonathan, My Book is Lit, Nathan T, Nev's Book Channel, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Anna, Andra, Angelo, Ben, Blair, Brock, Evan, Jen B, Harry B, Jamie, Jeff Pixler, Maria, Michael Sugarman, Sky, TW57, Wacky, and Zion.